Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Think CSEC. Today we'll be doing the part two of the CSEC Principles of Accounts, May, June 2018, Class Paper 1. So, if you have not yet watched part one, there's a card somewhere on this video to my right. You can go ahead and click it and watch it. Or you can click or check in the description box below and click on that link to that video so if you're new to the channel make sure that you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up like the video to show your appreciation for it and we're on a journey to reach 1000 subscribers so let's do this together let's do this you are our family so let us get right into it so 31 refers to the Following extract from a trading account. So we have opening inventory 200, sales 900, purchases 500, closing inventory 300. What is the gross profit? So there we have our sales 900. Then we know we less cost of goods sold. Then we have our opening stock 200. Then we add purchases 500. So 500 and 200, that's 700. Then we're going to less our closing stock of 300. So 300 from 700, we're left with 400. So that is our cost of goods sold. Then we did up 300 from 900. We get our gross profit of $500. C. And some of these questions are repeated questions, so I'll not be going through all of them since I have already explained in previous videos in the 2019 and the January 2020. So make sure to watch those videos as well. 32 says, when a trial balance fails to agree, the difference is entered in the A provision account, B suspense account, C reserve account, D control account. So we know it is B, it is suspense account. go on to 33. It says, how does an increase in bad debt affect a sole trader's financial statements? So we know that it decreases the net profit. So C would be our answer. 34 says, a trader at an opening capital of $3,900, if joins over $900 and closing capital was $4,860, what was the net profit? C should be your answer, $1,860. That one is another repeat question. Let's go to 35. In a partnership, which of the following transaction is compulsory? We know it is A, sharing of profits or losses. Go on to 36. It says M. Brown wishes to increase his provision for bad debts from 8% to 10%. Accounts receivable at the end of the year total $10,000. Whilst the balance in the provision for bad debts account is presently present is presently $800, which of the following would be the correct entries to record the provision for the year? No, in your working out you should get D for your answer. Debit profit and loss account, $200, and credit provision for bad debts account, $200. Let's go on to 37. Item 37 refers to the following information, which was extracted from the cash book of Dandy Deer. So we have balance per cash book, $560. Total unpresented checks, $120. Lodgement not entered on bank statement, $150. What is the balance per bank statement? So our balance per cash book is $560. Then we add unpresented checks, $120. That's a total of $680. And then we less lodgement not entered on bank statement, $150. So when we deduct that, $150 from $680, we get $530. D should be your answer. Let's go on to 38. 
item 38 to 39 refers to the following balance sheet information provided for a firm as of 1st of January 2017. So we're going to fill in the space here, debtors 1 and 2 here, what those, those represent. So what sum of money is represented by 1? One, 1, which is our debtors, we know that would be $2,000 B. So let's move on to the second part. What does that represent? Which of the following accounts is represented by two? So we know that it's our capital. So here, capital this represents. So let's go on to number 40. The following information relates to Harvard Sports Club for 2017. Number of members, 50. Annual subscriptions, $50 per member. Subscriptions owing at the beginning of the year, $450. Subscriptions owing at the end of the year, $150. How much should be credited to the club's income and expenditure accounts as total subscriptions for the year? So we have 50 members and $50 per member. So we simply multiply $50 by 50, we get D, $2,500. 41 says, W, X, Y, and Z are partners sharing profits and losses in proportion to their capital. The capital of each partner is shown below the parties and their profits. W, 300X, 200Y, 100Z, 300. What is Z share of a profit of 7,200? So we know the total of their proportion is 900 when we add all of them. Now Z share is 300, so we have to divide 300 by 900 and find that as a product by 7200 so when we do that when we put the equation 300 over 900 multiply by 7200 we get a seven two thousand four hundred let's move on to 42 which of the following accounts shows how profits and losses are shared among partners a current b appropriation c profit and loss d income and expenditure we know it is b appropriation let's move on to 43 the income and expenditure account shows the we know it is c sorry B instead. No, it is B, income earned and expenditure incurred for the period. So B would be our answer. That is income earned, income earned and expenditure incurred for the period B. 44 says, which feature is associated with private limited companies? A, they are family owned. B, shares are not sold publicly. C, financial statements are published. D, government agency purchase shares. So we know shares are not sold publicly. Let's go on to 45. Item 45 refers to the following information. We have inventory at the start of January 2013, 1500. Purchases during the month, 1200. Cost of goods sold, 1400. What is the inventory at the end of January? We did this one too already in the 2019 paper, and you should get D, 1300. Let's go on to 46. It says, a businessman incurred the following expenses. Factory repairs, 6,000. Machine repairs, 2,000. New machine, 3,000. New vehicle, 7,000. What is the total expenditure so we know that the total capital expenditure is this is when a business we know spends money to buy 
or add value to a fixed asset. So, so fixed asset. So what would be that new machine, obviously, and new vehicle. So therefore, we add these two total together, 3,000 and 7,000, and we get D, 10,000. Let's move on to volley seven. Amalgamated Components was a private company until it admitted additional shareholders by selling shares on the stock exchange. Amalgamated Components can now be described as a C, public limited company. Forty eight says, the main reason why a sole proprietor may consider joining with one or more persons to form a partnership is D, the business would get additional capital and management skills. So D would be your answer. 49 says, in order to avoid writing numerous checks for small amounts, a firm may set up a B, petty cash fund. One to 50. Which of the following accounts best describe the final accounts of a non trading organization? One, receipts and payments. Two, income and expenditure. Three, trading and profit and loss. Is it A, one and two only? B, one and three only? C, two and three only? D, one, two and three. We know it is A, one and two only. Let's go on to 51. A business with more than one owner records the division of profit in which of the following accounts? A, capital account, B, trading account, C, appropriation account, D, profit and loss account. We know it is C, appropriation account. 52 says, P. Amos is employed by a construction company at a rate of $7 per hour. During the week of 6th of April, he worked his basic week of 40 hours. The income tax due on his pay is $20, and he is also liable to pay Social Security contributions of 5% of his gross pay. What is his net pay? So 40 hours at the rate of $7 per hour. So his gross pay, so that is seven hours. $28, $280, less income tax of $20, that is $260 left, and then we find 5% of 5% of $280, you get $14. And when you did up $14 from $260, you are left with A, $246. 53 says, item 53 refers to the following information provided by a business. We have our receipts and payments. What is the bank balance in the receipt and payments account for the year ended 31st of July 2017? So in your working out, you should get B, $1,600 for your answer. Many of these questions are repeat. 54 says, item 54 refers to the following list of balances. Here's another one. J. Baines manufacturing account for the period ending 31st of December, 2017. All right, so it says, from the list of balances above, what is the cost of goods produced? Here is our total, 6,800. D would be your answer. Let's go to 55. Item 55 refers to the following list of balances. We have our working progress at the 1st of January, 1600. Then at the close of December 31st, 1700, cost of raw material use, 3000. Indirect expenses, 3200. Factory wages, 5000. So it says, from the list of balances above, what is the cost of goods produced? So we know that our cost of material use is 3000. Indirect expenses, 3,200, factory raises, 5,000, and then our work in progress at the start of January, 1,600. When we add all of those together, we get 12,800, and then we less our closing stock, 31st of December, 
1700 from 12,800, we are left with C, 11,100. 56. A business receives $5,000 for rent, revenue, and deposits this amount into its bank account. How will this transaction be recorded? So what would it be recorded as? So we know it would be B, debit bank, 5,000, credit, rent revenue, 5,000. Go on to 57. S&B Limited's net income for the year was $89,000. Of this amount, $8,000 was transferred to the general reserve. Preference dividend paid was $2,400. And ordinary dividend proposed was $6,500. The value of the retained profits for the year was, so we simply add 8000 2400 6500 and then we deduct that from $89,000. So A would be our answer, 72,158 says, P. Ork has a manufacturing business. The cost of his raw materials was 1,900. Rates and rent total $2,000 and factory wages amounted to $2,500. The number of units produced is 640. What was the cost of one unit? So when we add 1,900, 2,000 and 2,500, our cost total cost of materials is six thousand four hundred, and then we divide by the unit produced six forty, so we get ten dollars for each unit. Fifty nine cells. Item fifty nine refers to the following data, which pertain to Tarisha Ali, an employee of a bank. Monthly salary three thousand five hundred dollars. Over time, eight hundred dollars. Income tax rate, 25% on every dollar above $2,000 of monthly salary, 30% on overtime. The total income tax to be deducted from Tarisha Ali is, so we simply subtract 2000 looking at our monthly salary, we deduct $2,000 from $3,500 and find 12, 25% of that. So 2,000 from 3,500 is 1,500, and we find 25% of 1,500, we get $375. Now we have to add that to the amount that was charged on overtime. 30% on overtime, so 30% of 800 is 240. So when we combine the two total together, 375 and 240, we get 615A. And there's also another way that I worked this out in 2019 paper. So either way is acceptable. 60, final question says, an employee works for 45 hours in a given week. The rate for a 40 hour week is $4 per hour. Over time is paid at time and a half. What is his gross weekly wage? So 40 hours times four, we know that is $160. He worked five hours overtime at five and a half, time and a half. So time and a half, half of four is two. So four and two is $6 he worked at five hours overtime. So six times five is $30. So when we add $30 plus his gross um, wage of $160 in total is gross weekly wage is $190. B. So this is it. We have come to the end of the CSEC Principles of Accounts, paper 1, May, June 2018. So we have completed the entire paper. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.